Good day, how are you? Welcome to another broadcast. First of all, let's have our cuppa. I've got Earl Grey in my little brown Betty, and I've got I've got my cup of tea. I'm almost already done with the first cup. And look at my little posy, it's beautiful roses and my peace roses um, from the garden. Aren't those stunning? Look at how pretty. And um, so we're ready to go. Today's video is going to be all about jealousy and envy. And the reason that I wanted to do this video is because I think that oftentimes folks believe this is an interchangeable. Many folks believe that jealousy and envy are the same thing and they're not. We confuse the two. Many people confuse the two things. Um, they mean two entirely different things. So let's talk about, first of all, and then I will give also some examples, okay? Some examples of what and the kittens are. I think I might have to put the kittens outside and play. Jealousy is when you are looking upon another person and you actually want, you're coveting, you, you're literally wanting the same exact things, feeling very, very unsettled within your soul because you see other people getting things that you also would like to have. Or it could be even you don't care that you don't have those things, but seeing someone else get a piece of the pie is making you upset. Now, the reason that people become jealous and are jealous is it's a very normal behavior, especially when women are very insecure and they come from a basis of a scarcity mindset. So if you've got a scarcity mindset, you're going to believe that you're going to feel threatened and you're going to feel jealous of other people because what you're doing is thinking that there's only enough to go around. And if they're getting something, I'm jealous of that because you somewhere internally in your belief system, your subconscious mind, you believe that you do not have access to that as well. But it's only because you have the belief system that where it's imperative to figure out where that stemmed from as a child, not necessarily so important to go and dive deep into the depths of the ocean where that originated from because I'm not a big advocate of shadow work. Now, only shadow work in the essence of beneath the surface to recognize where my actual emotions and the things that bother me stem from. And you can always trace it back to childhood or circumstances or whatever happened to you. Now, the reason that I know that I became jealous and not understanding the difference between jealousy and envy is that jealousy comes from a hatred, a place of anger and unkindness and it comes from a place that is not good. It's the shadow side of you. It's the ego essence of a person. Whereas envy is not, there is no value placed upon that emotion because if I envy someone, it doesn't mean that I want what they have actually. I want the exact thing that they have. Now, it might be dressed accordingly into some sort of it appearing as though I wanted that particular thing. Now, I will give an example because I think that it's very important for us to be vulnerable and to share our life experiences because if we don't, people, people can't relate to you and they can't understand you or they're not willing to learn or be vulnerable themselves because if we sit here on our high horses and think that we are completely perfect and we never have to work anything else and we've got it all done and we figured out life, which no human being has, no human being has nor will ever, that it puts you on a, a, a trajectory of people not being able to identify with you. So therefore, I think it's important for me to share. Now, 
I'll give you an example of both, okay? When I was, now this is before I changed my beliefs, and still at times, envy will come up. It will bubble to the surface. That is therefore when I will plunge right in, try to recognize where is this coming from, do like a reverse engineering, try to understand my thought patterns and where that might stem from, what activated that emotion from me, and then I will therefore try to squash it, try to realize I, or perhaps create a new belief, um, imprint new beliefs into my subconscious mind so that I therefore never have that thought or pattern again. It's just like, this is why I'm such, and I will just bang on about this forever in the day because I believe it's essential in order for women to heal themselves because this is about healing ourselves and looking inward. It's not about looking outside of ourselves. Heaven is created within and the only way that you can conquer and control everything else is if you can control yourself, which is stemmed by our emotional well-being, okay? When I was, I remember this was, I mean, for most of my life, to be quite frank, for most of my life, I was very um, jealous of people that had a, their own home, that, that it was like a homestead place. It was like a place that they had been since they grew up and it was like in the family. And, and the reason for this is the reason that I was jealous of this is because I had always longed to be that way. So when I would see other people, this is before I understood jealousy and envy, is that understanding the correctness of what they both mean. Because you can misdirect your emotions if you think something one way and you have this belief system and it's absolutely not accurate. So I would be very upset and I would get jealous of these women that were building their forever home or whatever. Now this is when I was in my previous marriage and I would get jealous of that. I would get jealous of the fact that, that they were building a home or that they were, you know, they had their own home that they owned. That is what made me jealous because I wanted one of those. And so I continually tried find that reckoning within myself, but I never could understand it because, and I did not know how to get rid of that feeling because I did not like that feeling. It doesn't feel good to us. We know that, but if you don't change subconscious beliefs, and that's why I'll put this card up at the top about your subconscious mind and your conscious and, and subconscious, because if you do not understand, I'll also link it in the description box below, because if you don't understand why you're having these feelings and how to eliminate those, you will perpetually do the same kind of cycling and it will create your nervous system to constantly be on edge and it will never be able to balance itself out. You don't, you won't recognize, oh, this is, this is always about me. This is about Raquel. Why am I feeling? Why am I stimulated? Why am I upset about this person having this or that? And I know now it was because we, me and my ex-husband, we constantly had to move because of his career in, um, in show business, okay? And constantly moving around was something that I had never wanted to do. So I felt trapped as though I wanted to blame other people because I was in this predicament. And that's not actually what it was. It was just that if I could recognize a, this is not a good thing like I'm being jealous of another person because they have this lovely thing in their lives and I could also have that but because I didn't believe in manifestation and all of that I believed in religion and I always felt as though you know the things that I really wanted in my life that I was powerless to get because if God frowned upon me that I was not going to receive those blessings which is absolutely a farce. You know, as well as I do, that I've been banging on about this for a non-stop, is that, no, we are the God of our reality. There is nothing that we cannot have. And I will constantly remind you of this because it is so empowering to understand that there's nothing that you can't change in your life. Nothing that you cannot manifest. There is nothing. I don't care what it is. Anything that you want in your life, 
I don't care if it sounds minuscule. I don't care if it sounds ridiculous, if it sounds shallow. I don't care because anything that we desire, we can create. Okay, so that is how I was feeling because your emotions will tell you like, oh, I don't like that person's getting that. And the only reason that this comes to the surface of our being is because our mermaid inner being is telling us that we are rejecting and denying ourselves something that we truly, truly want, okay? Now, envy is this. Now, envy is wanting someone that someone else has, but you're not, you're not angry that other people have it. You're not irritated. Sometimes people can misconstrue these two particular things because say for example like i saw not recently on the substack and i subscribe to a couple of authors but for the free service you know, there's a particular author on there and i used to read her articles but i stopped reading them because you can tell through people's writing if they have emotional baggage attached to a particular article if you can step back for example, this particular one was talking about all of the people on Instagram that are social mum influencers, and they're also authors. But I know that there's this one that's a really, really big blogger, and she, she blogs about house decorating and projects and all of that sort of thing. And this particular author, this writer on Substack, was talking negatively in a sense about this particular woman because she had gotten a book deal from a publishing company, a big publishing company. Now to me, she would have been envious. I would have claimed that she was envious if she had no guile towards this woman. But she went on a rant and saying negative things about this particular mom influencer an Instagram person, you know, because she felt that it was wrong that she has spent her entire life being an official author and that she's never gotten a book deal. Now, I also want a book deal, but that's not hindering me from saying and giving myself permission to so you could say, well, Raquel, that means you're envious of everyone that's on the New York Times bestseller list. Envy in the way that, yes, because I also want that. But that does not mean that I've hindered or restricted myself of saying, I'm not officially a writer until I've been on that list. No, no, no. I've already given myself permission. I've in fact already said, I am a New York Times bestselling author. Regardless of what my 3D reality is telling me, I don't care what it tells me. And I don't care if it was the King of England that told me, you know, no, absolutely, that's not true, Raquel. We've no, we've no evidence of that whatsoever. I don't care. And that's what you have to do is you have to become so solidified in your self-confidence. This is what it all comes back to once again, is that we have to believe in ourselves. We as women must have a wonderful self-concept. That means you've got to have high self-esteem, high confidence. You can't be swayed by what the world thinks about you or other authors think about you. Because I can tell you, once you become the new version of yourself and the old person of you dies away, because that's what you have to do. You have to allow the old person to die away so where the new person can come in and fill that void of that new person in this new dimension, okay? If you do not do that, you will perpetually be on this pathway of constantly looking at other people in the world and competing, whether it's in your mind or whether you make an article or you write about it. It could be just in your little diary and no one knows about it, but the world will know about it because you are manifesting whether you Tell it on the screen space of reality or you don't. It's very, very energetically exposed when you 
are able to read your words back. I've done that often. I've read my words back and think, oh, well, you can see that there's a bit of still bit of hostility in, a, in an article that I wrote or, you know, anger or a lot of times I'll see bloggers use, they absolutely use um, sarcasm, which is a way of insulting and putting another down, but you're doing it in a way that you're trying to speak your truth, but you're not being authentic. So you do it in, a, in an aggravated way. And sarcasm is just pent up anger and hostility and internal um, sort of like internal low self-worth. That's what that is. Because if you have this type of attitude and you're doing it with sarcasm, this is creating your belief system. So if you wonder, well, why am I perpetually negative? Why do I oh, negative things always happen to me? Well, darling, this is why, because this is your script. You keep repeating this script over and over again. And you think it's like, haha, it's humor. No, actually it's self-defeating and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because you will create your reality. This is how you do it. So if you're going to continually do that to yourself, most importantly, that's what you're doing to yourself, this will continually and perpetually be your problem in life because you create your reality. You're, you're the God and goddess of your life. So you can't blame anyone else. You have to blame yourself. But most of the time, the world's not willing to do that. You know why? Because many women like to blame other people. They want to be a perpetual victim for the rest of their lives because they don't want to take accountability. You know why? Because it's hard to look at yourself and to become vulnerable and to become the kind of woman that you desire to be takes loads and loads of work, my love. It takes loads of work. And if I can give anything to you, it is to recognize the difference between jealousy and envy. It's beautiful to have envy. Say, for example, I see other people and yes, I want to be on the New York Times bestseller list. I want to have my forever property and forever home and ta 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 ta. You know what I'm saying? And so, but when I look at other people that have received those things, I'm literally happy for them because I know that that means mine is also coming because the only thing that they have done that you have yet to still have resistance in, right? Say, if, for example, you want to be a writer and you want to write a book. No one's stopping you from writing a book. You might be stopped because you feel that you're being stopped. And the only reason that you're being stopped is because of you and the belief system you have. If you believe that, you know, I want to be a writer and I'm going to be an author. But if you're sitting there and you're not willing to go, you know what? Maybe I can become a New York Times bestseller without having a publishing house to back me. How about you do it on your own and do it through Amazon? How about people do do that, you know? A prime example is the lady, whatever her name is. I can't remember what her name is. Is it Colette? Yes, she's become, uh, I mean, like a what? Quadruple New York Times bestseller and she started on Amazon. See, if you put resistance in your life and you say, well, it has to come this way. Well, then the universe is only subjected to you want things a certain way. You're not going to get them if you have all these barriers and these restrictions that the universe, the collective, the overall, the God, right? Your higher self, your higher being only has that way of which to work. So if you are putting restrictions and you're gatekeeping all of these things like universe, you have to do it through this way. It has to be this way. No, I have to have a publishing house. I have to do, well then, you're going to be limited because universal forces, right? The collective, the universe only because you are a free agent, you are free, right? So free agency cannot be stepped upon. Do you understand? You can't override free agency. So you are the God of your reality. So the universe will never impend on your free agency. So if you wonder, well, why is it God giving it? Well, maybe you need to look at it a different way. Maybe you're looking at it ass backwards. How about that? And 
I'm here to tell you these things, not because I'm being, uh, you know, trying to upset you or anything. I'm saying it because I love you. And oftentimes people need a good kick in the pants, kick in the trousers. Do you know what I mean? Because we oftentimes can't see the forest for the trees because we're so in our heads about it. Not a bad thing, loves. It's we, sometimes we're a bit stubborn. Okay, do you understand? I know this full well because I was a bit stubborn. And now, because I have created new beliefs in myself, new self, I have a beautiful self-concept that I'm not jealous or envy or have any kind of ill will or guile towards anyone. And, you know, obviously I'm a human, so emotions can make me, you know, get a bit, you know, irritated or whatever, but I'm able to handle my emotional well-being because I know how to balance my nervous system. I know how to do that. And once you know how to do this, this is what I'm trying to teach you, is that you will understand like <laughs> that. I remember, you'll, you'll think back, you'll think, oh, Razzie, I remember when Razzie used to, I'm thinking third person, I'm talking in third person. But I remember when dear old Razzie used to be so upset anytime she would go on the Instagram and she would see something that someone else had, she would get so flustered and so upset. <laughs> it would just throw her off, off kilter for, for, for no telling how long. And now I absolutely love looking at other people's stuff because I'm like, oh, they manifested that. Wow, it's good, good for them, you know? Um, and they deserve to big themselves up because they've manifested it because obviously they had no resistance towards that thing. But that was the name, Colleen Hoover. And obviously Colleen never had any resistance whatsoever towards being a New York Times bestselling author. Obviously she didn't. It was so easy peasy for her. And so it can be easy peasy for everyone. But if you're getting in your way and you've got resistance or you think all of these different things like negative self-concept, like, oh, it's never going to happen for me. Like those are things that you need to correct. You've got to change things about yourself. It's not changing the exterior world. It's you changing your issues within yourself. And it's only because we all grew up with circumstances, behavioral patterns, our mommy and daddy taught us things, our grandmommy, grandfather taught us things. We learn things through circumstances, experiences, environment, siblings, friends, aunts, uncles, all of those sort of things, life things, schooling, education, you know, political figures, pastors, bishops, monarchy, everyone's telling you certain things and that's how you create your belief systems before you were 12. Do you understand? All you have to do is go in and rework that system, your brain, and you can become the greatest version of yourself. There's no one keeping you from it. The only person keeping you from your greatest desires and dreams in the world is yourself. And that's a hard pill for people to swallow. I understand it because I remember there was a certain amount of time that, that, that I was really, really having a go about it because I did not want to face the fact that I was the, the, the creator of my reality because I wanted to blame other people. It felt better, you know? It does. And so just be, be gentle with yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't think you're doing anything wrong or you've done anything wrong. You've not done a thing wrong. You're perfect, perfectly perfect exactly where you are and you've needed all of this, all of the dots will connect and it's all righty that you've been where you have been. Don't think it's a bad thing that you've been where you've been. Just accept it, willingly understand, I want to change who I am. I want to become that new person. And so I'm going to do it. And I believe in you. I absolutely believe in each and every one of you. And so I just want you to know that and I want to be your cheerleader here on the flip side of that camera for you to understand that I want you to feel empowered. I want you to achieve your dreams. I really, really do. And I know that that sounds like far-fetched or something because there's so many cynical people in the world that they don't understand like, oh, genuine people still exist in the world, but they do me and millions and millions of other people too, you know? But sometimes we just need a little cheerleader on our side. It's like, you know what? If Raquel can do it and she's 
this little country bumpkin from this little old wee little village town that no one knows of, then you can too, you know? If you like this video, I hope that I answered all of the questions. If not, why don't you leave a comment in the section below and I would love to hear from you because like-minded folks like ourselves, this is the way we create the community that we long to be in, is that when like-minded folks share and communicate with one another in a, in a kind, loving way, you know, not with viciousness or unkindness, just with love unfeigned and that is how I would love to keep the waters over on this side of the internet right if you like this video I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and if you would like to subscribe or comment that really really helps the algorithm and it improves my viewing for other people to see my channel and you know I've been on a hiatus for quite some time if you've noticed my old catalog of my videos is actually a beautiful realization and demonstration of how I transitioned and became the person that I am today because I'm not like the the old Raquel like I've given up so many things and become the new version of myself this is the new version of me and so I want you to know that you can also do it that's why I leave those videos up so that you can see all how much I've grown because it's, it's lovely to have someone like to say, oh, I see how much they've grown and become a different version. Like, oh, she had loads of anger back then. And oh, she had loads of sadness back then. And she had loads of jealousy back then. And so you can see that changing and that transformation in my life. So it's beautiful to be able to see that and have proof, validity of, oh, look, she actually did it. She's not just saying that she experienced all of those things and didn't. If you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for sticking round. And as always, I'm most affably yours till my next swim. Cheers, darlings. Toodle pip.